Welcome to the Sunrise Safari on this, what I would describe as bitterly chilly, but perhaps some of you are laughing at me in the colder places of the world. My name is Jamie, I have Jean-Dre on camera with me, and we are coming to you live from Juma and Arethusa Game Reserves in the Sabi Sands area, which falls under the Greater Kruger National Park area in South Africa. And not only are we live, but we are also interactive. So please send us through your questions on hashtag Safari Live on Twitter, or you can email us through to questions at wildearth.tv. We love hearing from all of you. This is the coldest start to the morning so far this year at 14 degrees centigrade, which is 58 in Fahrenheit. It's positively Arctic. I'm wearing four layers. And I still don't feel entirely warm. It might almost be time for beanies and scarves and gugs and so on. And if I think I've got it bad, poor old Jago sitting at the back there has got it even worse. Because when you're driving around in an open vehicle, the wind chill factor certainly plays something of a role in the morning's temperature. And the wind is still howling, not quite as badly as it was yesterday afternoon on the sunset safari where the trees basically looked as though they were bent double. And it is still blowing a little bit of a gale, but maybe, just maybe, looking at the light in the sky, maybe it's blowing something away. Certainly didn't come with much in the way of rain, but look, there's a little bit of light on that horizon. Sam is out with Brian on the Wendy, so the vehicle named Wendy, I'm out on Rusty. And my plan for this morning is to go and see what the hyenas are up to, because every time I have tried to visit them in the last few days, they've been hiding away from me. Nobody's been home. I'm hoping that today it might be a little bit different and I'll get to see them again. I was watching when Sam was there and they've grown just in the few days that I haven't seen them. They have grown enormously. There's nothing quite as impressive as a hyena cub's growth. Their mothers have the richest milk of any mammal species out here. And if that fails and nobody's home, then we'll go looking and see if we can't follow up on Tundi and Tingana from yesterday. So yesterday afternoon, for those of you who missed it, we had Tundi and Tingana, two leopards mating. Tingana being the dominant male leopard in this area. Tundi being the daughter of the famous Queen Karula. And I'm not sure where Karula was this whole time, but I don't think she's going to be terribly impressed with the presence of another female leopard right in the center of her territory. It looked as though they were going to head off to their separate ways yesterday. There was a distinct, although they were still very enthusiastically mating, the build-up to it, there was a sort of distinct reluctance, especially on Tingana's part. One has to feel for him. He's looking absolutely exhausted. He's also got a puncture wound on his back right knee that looks like it's hurting him. He was walking very carefully yesterday. It was cold, which probably didn't help. But it's quite a fresh-looking injury. It makes me wonder whether or not it wasn't acquired during the hunt of a Dacre. I mean, we suspected, and we said yesterday, we thought he'd stolen that Dacre from Karula. But just looking at where that wound is and what it looks like, to me, it makes me think maybe a horn or a sharp hoof. I thought about the possibility of Tundi having inflicted him, uh, that on him during their mating, and that is a possibility. It does happen. It's just that the position of that puncture wound and the extent of it looks to me more like a, an actual puncture rather than a slashing movement of the claws. Of course, the moment a male dismounts from a female when they are mating, she turns around and kicks him very hard with her back feet in the stomach. So that is a possibility, but I think unlikely. So that's my plan for the morning. I think Sam has actually gone straight across to where we last saw those leopards. So let's find out how his morning's going and if he's found them. Good morning, everyone. 
down to the northeastern part of South Africa, the Sabi Sands. Here I'm working for Wild Earth. My name is Sam Chevalier, and it is quite a cold morning this morning. We have Brian behind camera. And as you can see, Brian is fairly warm with his uh, thumb, got a little scarf there, if you can see. So myself, Brian, and the thumb with the scarf are off on an adventure into the wilderness, and we're gonna see what we can find. Uh, yesterday, as you know, there was mating leopards, and Tingana and Tandi, and we, ooh, the little daker just jumped past there. Uh, yes, yeah, so we, we're just driving this area. Of course, I'm not very familiar with the roads, um, and so I'm still trying to figure out where I am and how to locate different things, but I'm learning slowly but surely. Um, we're just gonna drive very, very slowly. I'm gonna keep my eye on the road to see if I can see any tracks heading um, across the road, as well as looking into the, the thick foliage, which has really, really started to develop. You know, since I've been here, we had some awesome rain yesterday, which is going to be filling up the watering holes, and it's all quite exciting being out here in the bush at the moment to see the abundance of life beginning to emerge as the, as the rain subsides, and hopefully the cold. <laughs> um, but yesterday was an incredible morning. I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you, everyone, for a, for a fantastic first morning drive on Safari Live. It was great. Chandra was an amazing cameraman behind the camera who helped me and it gave me the confidence I needed to, to grow into myself and the landscape. And we managed to see hyenas. It was awesome. We tracked. Uh, we were tracking the hyena uh, to, the old, to the new den site and then we just went to have a look at the old den site and there they were. The hyenas were there. So it's, it was all very exciting. Um, and then which, which made me laugh quite a lot. I was on, I was just sitting back at camp yesterday, taking some notes and, and trying to go through, you know, the things that I did right and the things that I did wrong so far. Not wrong, but you know, in a way in which I can do better, rather. And uh, and I got a message from Graham, who I haven't actually directly met before, and, uh, and there I met him on Facebook. So. <laughs> Uh, we went on, as I'm sure some of you guys were there on the interview with Graham, uh, in the south of France, Côte d'Azur, and we, the, he was eating chips and having a burger and chatting to all his friends. Uh, it was quite a, quite a funny experience, I really enjoyed getting to know Graham for the first time over Facebook live interview. Um, it was great, so I'm sure some of you guys were all there. Um, <laughs> it was quite funny, got back to camp and some of the camp some of the directors were quite upset because they, you know, st stealing some of the viewers from from the Tingani and the Tandi site to to sit with Graham having French fries in the south of France. <laughs> so the plan this morning is to just gently bumble in a in a southerly direction towards the cut line and see if we can find tracks as I mentioned earlier but at the same time all of you guys know that uh, I'm going to be starting a bird list while I'm here and I would love for all of you guys to interact and be part of my my search for birds in the Sabi Sands as I said I haven't been here for quite some time so let's let's uh, let's have a look hopefully we can find the black-headed oriole when I see that black-headed oriole I might just do a dance <laughs> no, I, I probably won't, but to be honest, I really, really love the black-headed oil, and I haven't seen it in over one and a half years. So to see it with you guys for the first time back in the sands would make me the happiest man alive. Let's just, before we link to uh, Jamie, I just want to say thanks to everyone for such a great few days, and I'll see you just now. Well, Sam says he hasn't seen a black-headed oriole in one and a half years. I'm starting to feel like this about the hyena cubs. Maybe it's a slight exaggeration on my part. It's probably been about a week. But here I am at the den with the grass blowing in the wind in waves, and nobody's home again. This is starting to get slightly distressing. I seem to be having 
bad luck with our hyena cubs at this point. I'm going to go and check the other den site just in case they're still there. But as I said, cold weather, windy weather, they are quite often in the den. I know that they came out for James yesterday. I'm going to try not to be offended by that in any way. We'll go see if they're not at the other den site. Of course, I am only joking. The, the adults are probably out scavenging something. And the cubs without the adults are not nearly as brave. They do occasionally come out by themselves, but they tend to be a bit more cautious. I'm fairly certain that if there were any on the other side, they would have come by to say hello. Somebody has urinated just next to the den site. So they are around here. They have been around here. Oopsie. My nav navigation skills letting me down here. I really drove Jandre into this tree. Wouldn't be the first time, hey, Jandre? <laughs> I have on occasion accidentally put Jandre in a couple of trees before. It does, it does happen. And the wonderful thing about Jandre, of course, is that he doesn't complain in the slightest. In fact, he might not even mention it until you turn around and realize that he's sort of trying to film whilst covered in a tree and leaves. Oh, I got excited there for a moment, but I think it's just a log. It's a hyena log. The navigation of this hyena den is a little bit more tricky than their other den sites that they have chosen. It was worth, it was worth checking. But nobody's home. All right, on to plan B. Let's go and see. I feel as though 